Hello, and we welcome back to theCUBE in our plush intercontinental press room at Databricks Data and AI Summit Studio. So thank you for joining us again. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, a company that I know from having partnered with you in a past life uh, from Fivetran, and we have Taylor Brown, who's a co-founder and COO with Fivetran here to join us today. And we're going to jump into kind of how people are using data and getting the data into Databricks so that they can do all this magic with AI. And I think, you know, again, this is really the front end of the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this is why, I, I mean, I'm a little bit of a geek in this space, so <laughs> I, I kind of get excited about yeah. it. Uh, but welcome, and Thank thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Rob. So why don't you kind of just give a high level overview of Fivetran and tell people, I mean, especially the name. I mean, sure. You know, it, so five, five Chan, uh, as I was just telling Rob, is a, is a play on words of Fortran, which is sort of the next generation. For those of you who don't know Fortran, it's a programming language from the low level programming language of the 1950s, uh, which, um, you know, again, it, it is worked for us. It's, it's kind of- It's a total geeky thing. It is. And I did Fortran on punch cards. That was exactly. one of the first things I did out of the box uh, when I learned. And, I'm glad I don't do that anymore. But <laughs> so I'm glad to be towards five. Gosh, right we've now. come a long way. Yes, we have. We have. So tell us about more about. Yeah. Five so Tran. so um, five Tran is a data movement platform, and what that means is let's start with the uh, with your cloud data platform, and that's you know uh, Delta Lake, uh, which is essentially in a cloud data platform. You have your your data lake and your data warehouse, or some combination of those. Um, and virtually every company either is building this, has built it, or will build this in the next few years. Now the big, you know, the value that you get out of a cloud data platform is the data component, that like really, that middle word there. So we help get data into the, your cloud data platform from all the various different places that you have it with, you know, across uh, all of your different business systems, your product systems, your customer systems. Um, and as you know, Rob, over the last few years, there's been a explosion of more, you know, SaaS solutions or hosted, cloud hosted, you know, offerings. You know, there's probably a new one every single day, if not multiple new ones every single day. And these technologies, you know, are very purpose built for our customers but it creates a relatively large problem because all of this data becomes siloed all over the place. And the value is when you get all of that into your cloud data platform. Yeah, and not only that, but I would expect that you're having conversations where people are looking that they have to be careful with some of that data because of PII Certainly. and GDPR, and we're, we're in California, so CCPA, and a number of other regulations. So I'm sure they're coming to you and saying, hey, I want to take some of this data from this CRM system. I want to combine it with some other data from over here. Mm -hmm. Help me go and do that. That's right. One, so we do the, the movement part of it. It's fully automated, and that's the, the sort of the, the thing that's different about us versus the previous set of tools is there's you know this thing called ETL, which is extract, transform, and load. And the reason for that you know transform in the middle was because the, the databases they were loading into couldn't handle the scale, and they're also quite expensive. And so you would aggregate this data, load it into the database, and then you're kind of stuck with whatever you had. You couldn't go back. Um, and now with the scale that's available in the cloud with Delta Lake, you can essentially move everything over. And so you take all of the source data and you move it into the warehouse and you do EL and then you do the transformation there within the, the actual lake itself. And then in terms of how do you know like what data is in there, how is it, you know, wh what's being moved. Uh, well, the, the nice thing is we integrate directly into the Unity catalog. Yep. So you can know down to the row and down, or excuse me, down to the column, you know, what, what data is being moved and, and what's the lineage of that? Where did it come from? When did it come from there? And we've added some interesting features on top of that for automatic PII detection or automatic uh, PHI detection. So for central IT teams, they can give a tool like Fivetran to all of their internal consumers and say, hey, like marketing, here, you know, here's your access. And, you know, and then like, hey, you know, finance, here's your access. And hey, product, here's your access. And then they can go in and so set up all these different connectors and load all that data. And the central IT team can know, 
you know what, I feel safe because my PII detection is automatically happening and I'm either hashing that or I'm like flagging it or I'm not moving it. Uh, so there's you know some control there and then it's all in Unity so you know exactly what you're getting. So do you hash it on the way in, for instance? That's is, right, yeah, we can. Yes, yeah, so you can set up yeah. to say like, hey, if I have a VIN number or I have a uh, social security number or whatever, I want you to hash it. Yeah, I, I think that's where I, I really liked this space because I think that, again, you can protect the users of the data before it gets into ML, you know, ML and the right. AI because you don't want leakage. So That's this right. is a lot of what you guys are, the value you're adding to this is, hey, we not only can do the data movement, but we help you protect yourself. That's right, and, and like I think if you look back in time, there was sort of this you know, belief in the you know, 2007, 2008 Hadoop era where you just, let's load everything, right? But you don't know if you have PAI or PHI or what you have in there, yeah. and then it, you kind of have this like data swamp and you're trying to figure out what it is. And, and I think that that then created a whole lot of extra work you know, at, at, like after you've loaded the data. And I think the thing now is load it, but know sort of what you're loading and load it in a, you know, in a, in a uh, more thoughtful way for what you're going to do down the road. And, uh, and that's kind of where we are now. And 5chain does a really good job of, of helping you get, you know, the really good schemas from all the different places that you have them into a very easy format to then run like within Databricks. Yeah, and, and you guys have made some acquisitions over the years and you're doing some integrations. How, how's that going along? That's a great question. So two years ago, we acquired a company called HVR and HVR was the sort of best in the world at replicating data from your legacy databases. So mm -hmm. from, from Oracle, from SAP, uh, from a SQL Server on Microsoft and a plethora of other ones. Um, and so, in that acquisition, we, Fivetrans, you know, was sort of more of a cloud tool, and they're an on-premise tool. We've we've combined the two together, so now we can offer, you know, connecting to over 300 different connections wow. from all of your different SaaS, you know, tools like Salesforce, Marketo, HubSpot, like all of these. And now, in addition to that, we can also do all of your databases, and we can do them for the largest databases on the planet. We have multiple different deployment options for whatever security needs you need. We can have it on-premise, fully on-premise to cloud, partially on-premise to cloud, fully cloud-based if you don't want to actually run any more infrastructure. You know, we have all the different options for our customers, uh, and, and, I, and it's a very exciting time that we're now sort of rolling yeah. these all out and, and seeing the success. Yeah, and I, I think what's been, I mean, obviously it's a hot area because of AI has exploded, and I think that like you were saying, people were already doing modeling, like you were saying, right. that the T part That's right. is doing modeling on top, mm -hmm. uh, and there's obviously a the whole plethora of people down on there, including DBT and others that they're using That's right. to go and do that on top of Databricks so that they can then, you know, again, it takes that workload off of having to do it pre-getting in there and being that smart about it, I guess absolutely. you could say. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think what's also interesting about what you, you guys were early on in the marketplace, how, how's that been going? How, how, you know, again, help people understand what the marketplace is? Because I think everybody kind of has the concept of, oh, I've gone and done something out of Amazon's marketplace or something. Mm -hmm. How does Databricks really go and help their partners like yourself with that? Yeah, I mean, it, um, it's a great question. You know, I think la when we were one of the first partners in the marketplace, and it, it took a little bit to get to a place where on both sides to make it a very easy uh, uh, interface for our, our joint customers or customers to go in and, and actually set up connectors within Fivetran directly from the marketplace. And so uh, customers can go in and, and there's a whole marketplace. You can look at all the different ad connectors. So say you're in marketing, you can go in and look, uh, you know, I want to get my AdWords connection here. I would love to get my AdWords data, or I'd love to get my uh, double click data, or I'd love to get my, uh, you know, my Bing data. And they can click with one, one click, it will launch into a Fivetran instance. Uh, it will automatically connect them to Databricks, and it will bring up a screen that says, okay, now I need a one click authenticate to my, you know, Bing, ad clicks, double, you know, double click ad AdWords, whatever. Uh, and from there, we start then replicating the data and bringing it in. But it's as easy as like a few clicks to start getting all this critical data in from that marketplace. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, when I talk to customers, a lot of what they're looking to do is bring that data together with maybe some first party data That's that right. they're collecting as well and try to correlate that all and using modeling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's where then they may go off and do recommendations right. or you know, do some uh, reverse ETL to try to do some 
uh, marketing campaigns and stuff like that. Right. How, how are, are there things that you haven't covered yet that from a uh, connector perspective that you're getting pushed to or, you know, what's, what's next on the horizon for you guys? Well, it, it's always um, re 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 more reliability, more speed, and more connectors. It's pretty much what we get all day long because folks want to get, you know, sub-minute latency of their data into Databricks yep. and they want it from all of their connections. And all, what that means is, you know, the, I think the average uh, company has something like 200 different services that they're using. And a lot of the, the more cutting edge companies have like thousands of different services that they're using across every single one of their uh, business units. So that so the, when they come into Fivetran and uh, or they come to use Fivetran, essentially they're always like, do you have this connector? Do you have that connector? Do you have this one? And so we've actually spent a, a tremendous amount of time building a new technology within our, our own uh, internal system that, and we're actually leveraging, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of AI and ML to actually pre-create some of these and have a human check them. And so we're actually being able to create connections really, really quickly, and, and to the point where folks can actually request one, and we will we will create it for them. And that for you know for a company that comes in and says, you know, I need all of my marketing connectors in order to build a customer 360 to understand what's happening. This is what Condé Nast is right. doing right now with with us and with Databricks. Um, and they brought us data in. And you know, for them, it's like if you if we have uh, say nine out of the ten, they uh, they need that tenth one to be able to get the like, the full picture. Right. And so we can now say yes, we will add that for you. Uh, and then that becomes available to all of our other customers. And then for Condé Nast, they're, they're, they've built some models on top of that, and then they're actually creating a, a slightly better user experience, and they keep you know, updating that for all of the Condé Nast users. Yeah, because I, I think you hit on a, a, a pretty important point that I, I think is, it's not just about how we can go out and market to these people, it's about customer experience as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Especially, and I, I think that's, that's a huge, piece of what people are using Fivetran for, using Databricks and the modeling. It's not just the spooky stuff like, hey, I get a recommendation for right. something. It's, hey, I actually I see where you're dropping out within this application that you're using. Right. So, uh, which is critical. And I, so hey, I really appreciate you being on with us, Taylor. Absolutely. Uh, Fivetran's, I'm a big fan. So, uh, you know, again, glad to see you here and it was uh, really nice to catch up. And, Thank you for watching The Cube, and we really appreciate you all watching. And we'll be back soon from Databricks AI, or Data and AI Summit, here from the press room.